Hey everybody, welcome to Jesus Rants. Today uh, I'm going to talk about Jesus, uh, as as obvious as that is. Uh, but uh, I want to talk about my view of Jesus and and the real uh, who Jesus really was. So a lot of people I, I feel like think that Jesus was like a, a hippie, you know, like a, a peace loving uh, a type of guy who just walked around and and didn't want to hurt anyone's feelings, and that he was. S- you know, calm natured and, 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 you know, just all about love and peace and happiness. And, and, uh, yeah, he was all about love and, and he does love peace and he, you know, he enjoys happiness, but that's, that's not who he was. He wasn't some hippie that was walking around and, and, uh, all he cared about was peace and joy. You know, he, he even said, I didn't come to bring peace. So I think that right there should show you that, that that's not in there. That that's not what what he came to do. Um, it, Jesus was a hero, in every sense of the word. Um, so when all these these people are like, "Oh, this guy is a hero," or he's you know this and that, and like, no, you need to look at Jesus. That that's what a true hero was. And my favorite song right now is by Phil Wickham, and it's called uh, "This Is Amazing Grace," and it's and it's awesome. And it talks about like what God does and the the things that he's capable of doing. And it talks about, you know, he rules the nations with truth and justice and he brings our chaos back into order and he makes the orphan a son or daughter. And it's, it it just shows his power. Okay. And there's a song by a band and it's called hero. And it says like, you know, there goes a hero. That's what he is. Like you see Jesus, you see a hero and and people, I always hear people talk about like movies and stuff, like American Gangster, and I'm like, oh, that's power right there. And I'm like, well, do you ever like stop and think about Jesus's power, like what he did? He was taking a nap, and there was a storm going on outside, and so all his disciples woke him up, and you know, his com- they were complaining about the storm. So he basically gets up, walks out on deck, and tells the storm to shut up. Like, knock that off. You're done. Stop it. Peace be still. You know, and he told the storm to knock it off, and it listened. He told diseases to go away. He told death to stop infecting his friend. He said, hey, get up. Or this this girl's just sleeping. He controlled death. He controlled disease. He controlled the wind. And we don't look at that as greatness and we think he's soft. We think he's... You don't look at him as a hero. Now the reason that he can do these things is because he owns it. It's his. This this earth is his. He created it. Okay, And we can get into to creation and evolution all we want. But he created it. Okay, and I, and I really feel like most people really really do believe that, and even as much as they they try to try to disprove it, but they believe it. It you know he, there is a creator, and that's why everything works the way it does. That's why we don't know understand certain things about the body and then and, and all all these things. But but that was the reason why Jesus was able to do it. And I was asked, you know, what was the difference between Jesus and then all these people? Because there was other miracles performed, and it's and it's true. But thing was, is he controlled everything whenever he wanted he healed whole cities at a time people would come to his wherever he was at and they'd come to the doorstep and he would just heal every single person that came up no disease bye you know um uh demonic spirits get out of here i'm in charge i run this place because i'm the boss because i created it i own it i'm the man here and no one can tell me differently Okay, in Mark, it always it always talks about suddenly and and like then it happened immediately, and it talks about how things happened as soon as Jesus wanted it to happen because he was the boss, he was in charge, he was the true man, he, he controlled everything because he owned it. Okay, now I, I want to put this into perspective for you. Um, I at my house I have carpet in the living room and in the hallways in the dining room, and I, I don't like when people wear shoes in my house okay i don't i don't like to wear shoes in my house um so i ask people if they you know to take your shoes off when you walk in the house and because i i I don't want to clean as much and i don't want to have to shampoo my carpets all the time and that's just a rule that i have it's my house i feel like i should be able to have that rule 
you know, uh, and some people don't like it. And sometimes people, even though they've been over 18 times, will just walk in and will wear their shoes and they know better, but they do it anyway. Okay. So they, they, they did broke one of my rules. That was pretty disrespectful when they've been over a lot, I think. So, um, not really not that big a deal. It's just shoes. You know, it's not like I lose friendships over it, but just, that's just a little simple, silly rule. Okay. Now think about the God of the universe. I didn't build this house. I, I don't even own it. The bank technically owns it. Um, so I have these rules and I, and I think that people, I, I think I would like people to respect my rules. And so God is perfect and he built all of this. He made all of this. He makes, not only did he make it, but he, he continues to set it in motion to let it go. And so he has these rules that, that people break. So like just this simple rule, and I'm sure some of you feel me on, on the, on the, the shoes thing. So it's like you broke God's rules and he's perfect. And he has the ability to make winds stop, to make a storm shut up. He has the ability to tell disease it doesn't belong here. It ha he has the ability to overcome death and laugh at it in its face. And that's the guy, that's the rules, that's the guy whose rules you're breaking. You broke his rules. You came into his house and broke his rules. And that's the same guy that died to save you after you broke his rules. Or in the middle of breaking his rules. So you broke the most, you know, I like to use the term, man, that guy's a beast, you know, when it comes to certain things. So you broke the biggest beast rules in the world. The man that can truly destroy you with his thoughts. That's the man whose rules you broken. And despite all of that and all of his power, he decided he chose to die for you. So that you may be saved and that you could live with him in perfect peace and perfect happiness and perfect joy for all of eternity. Is that, is that wrap, you wrapping your mind around that? So he, he's this perfect, perfect God, all powerful, almighty. And don't ever forget those things because he is. He is all those things. He can send you to hell, which is the worst thing that you can think of times a million. Constant. You don't sleep. You might think, you know, you go to work in hell, but you get to go home or wherever you're at. You get to have peace. Hell's not like that. Constant. You don't sleep. Constant. But with that, the man who has all that power decided to save you because you needed a hero at that moment. You needed someone to save your life because the scariest person, the person with the most power, you broke his rules. A lot. So you needed a hero in that moment. And Jesus is that hero. He died so that you don't have to face that. He took your punishment for that. People say, oh, Jesus was scared of the cross. He cried. He, God, take this from me. He, he wasn't afraid of the cross. He is not afraid of the cross. You can say he was afraid of the cross, but Peter and his wife were singing on the way to the cross? I don't think so. Not Jesus. Not, not the Savior of the world. Not the creator of the universe. He wasn't scared of the cross. He was scared of the cup. That cup had all of your sins in it. All of your wrath that you deserved for breaking the creator of the universe's laws in it. He drank that cup. He drank my cup. He drank your cup. That's what it was because he's a hero. He's the true hero. He's the savior of the universe. That's who Jesus is. It's not all about peace and happiness because he didn't live a life of peace and happiness. So that's not what he's called you to do. He wants you to be a hero. He wants you to put your life on the line for him and for those around you. Thanks for listening, guys. I, I hope you enjoyed it. I love you, and I hope uh, this inspires you to, to be more like Jesus and to put yourself out there and to see Jesus work in your life in amazing ways. He's your hero. Let him be.